A drone flew over Israel's coast and captured an incredible Hobbit home carved into a cliffside. Please don't forget to subscribe and activate the bell to receive everything that's new. With its onboard camera surveying the rugged shoreline, the drone hovering high above the weathered cliffs, down below the sea sparkled in the sunshine. A handful of beachgoers wandered across the sand, and then the drone caught sight of something weird and fantastic, something that looks straight from a Tolkien novel. To be sure, the advent of affordable drone technology has allowed amateur videographers to capture stunning footage of the world's most spectacular locales. And Apollonia National Park in Israel is an ideal spot for such a flyby. Framed by bright blue skies and gentle waters, its landscapes are singularly aesthetic. And so in 2014, amateur drone pilot Jesse Peters documented the park and posted his footage on YouTube. He explained that his videos were aerial footage captured in different locations I've traveled throughout the years. As I slowly improve my photography and flight equipment, so is the stability and clarity of the footage captured. Enjoy! In fact, his chosen craft for this particular shoot was a DJI Phantom 2 Vision. Though the quadcopter drone has now been superseded by new and improved models, it still boasts some impressive technology. For one, it records footage with a built-in HD camera capable of streaming live from up to 980 feet away. Soaring north and south over the weathered clifftop, the drone surveyed Apollonia National Park Punctuated with sparse palm trees and wiry shrubs, the land was arid, dusty, and parched. Hiking trails skirted the precipice, supplying expansive views of the Mediterranean Sea. Offshore, a speedboat plowed through the water. Though it might seem peaceful and remote, this little stretch of coastline has in fact seen turbulence since the antiquities. Once upon a time, Apollonia was a Greek city. However, it fell to the Romans and then centuries later in 640 AD to Muslim control. In 1101, the Kingdom of Jerusalem conquered Arsuf, as it was then known. The city was finally destroyed in the Middle Ages, around 1265. However, excavations of its remains began in the 1990s and continue to this day. A medieval wall, a crusader castle, a port and a Roman villa are among the structures archaeologists have so far uncovered. Though it did resemble something from an ancient bygone era, the buildings Peter's drone captured was actually constructed in recent times. Built into the side of a cliff, the haphazard structure, apparently forged from natural materials, appeared to blend into the landscape. Indeed, it looked not unlike a hobbit house. In fact, the cliffside structure is the creation of artist Nissen Kachlan, who began digging into the soft limestone more than four decades ago. The hodgepodge labyrinth of tunnels and sheltered enclaves represents not only his life's work but also his home. And so, in many ways, Cachlan is a modern day hermit. Traditionally, hermits separated themselves from society in order to achieve serenity and spiritual insight. But in Cachlan's case, the urge to isolate may have been partly fueled by a basic desire to disconnect from the stresses of modern life. Equally, his artistic work may have been a key factor in his life of solitude. I decided that I didn't want to live in the city, I love the sea, and that's how I came here," Kachlan told the Israeli news site Arutz Shiva. I don't have to pay city tax because I don't have garbage. I burn everything and use the ashes for concrete to build with. Indeed, Kachlan appears to have achieved a remarkably simple and self-sufficient lifestyle. He pays no electricity or telephone, he draws his water from a well, and he washes his own clothes. He prays on a daily basis and adheres to the traditional rules of the Sabbath, too. I get up at quarter of six in the morning and go to synagogue, a 15-minute walk from here," Kashlan told Arut Shiva. I cook for the Sabbath starting today, Sunday, green beans and meat from a cow's neck, salad and sardines. Unfortunately, there used to be plenty of fish in the sea, he added, but today they're already gone. Industrial fishing killed it. Still, Kachlan seems to be surviving quite nicely nonetheless. And how many hermits can boast a cave as unique and interesting as this? A city engineer who came was shocked, Kachlan continued. Indeed, his home is a wildly rambling edifice that seems to defy all conventional architectural appearances. Hand-built from shells, trash, concrete, and sand, the house has gradually expanded over the years, starting in the 1970s. But despite decades of isolation, the Israeli hermit is not entirely disconnected from society. In fact, Kashlan is a divorced father of three. 
and in 2014 concerned that his life's work may go to ruin he invited his estranged 18 year old son Moshi to move in with him indeed their story was the subject of a documentary called Apollonian story according to the film synopsis Moshi re-entered Nisim's life and together they work to dig out the cave in which he will live through their hard work a complex relationship between father and son is revealed when the time comes Moshi is set to inherit a truly eclectic creation a cave house filled with sculptures patios and tiled mosaics of course the best thing about it is the location right on the beach and in the heart of a national park but will Moshi embrace a life of solitude like his father only time will tell but meanwhile there's a serious threat to Cashlon's work the sea itself wave erosion compounded by intensive coastal development choose away at the limestone cliff supporting his construction one day Cashlon's house will also become ancient history for now however his eccentric hobbit house remains an iconic feature of the Apollonia National Park shoreline everyone is welcome to come visit Cashlon told a root Shiva indeed you won't want to miss this intriguing structure or its equally intriguing owner thanks for watching please don't forget to subscribe and activate the bell to receive everything that's new